Hey everybody, it's low carbon keto friendly nutritionist Amy Berger from toitnutrition.com bringing you another video in doing keto without the crazy. Before we get into today's topic, as usual, I got a couple little reminders. Number one, don't forget about my ebook, The Stall Slayer. If you are using a low carb or ketogenic diet to lose body fat and you have been stalled for a while, not a couple days, you know, but many, many weeks or months, if your body fat does not want to budge and you don't know what you're doing wrong, check out the Stall Slayer, stallslayer.com. There's a link below. And I said that was number one, but I think that's all there is. I don't think there's a number two. So let's get into things. Today's topic is a viewer request. Um, I had somebody write to me recently to ask a question about this issue and I said, oh, that's a really good question that I know a lot of other people out there have, so I'll do a video on it. So now that I think about it, it wasn't so much a viewer request as a question from somebody that I'm turning into a video because it's an important topic. And I finally got back into making notes, and so these notes are more than one page, so this is going to be kind of a longer video, but you know, when I have an important topic like this, I don't want to gloss it over. I don't want to half ASS it. So I'm going to talk for as long as I need to talk to say everything I want to say. One of the first things I have to say, as always, is that I'm not a medical doctor. None of this is medical advice. I'm just a nutritionist. And we're just going to talk about some keto stuff and some human biochemistry and physiology. So what is today's topic? Why aren't my ketones higher? Why are my ketones so low? What am I doing wrong? Whew. So I said it was a big topic, right? Lots of points that I want to start off with, and then we'll kind of go into the nitty gritty details as we go on. I think the first thing I want to say is that, and, and you know this if you've read my blog or you've watched my videos, I generally discourage ketone testing, whether we're talking about your blood, your breath, or your urine ketones, I generally recommend that people don't test. And the reason I recommend not testing is because so many people don't have a solid understanding of all the different mechanisms and feedback loops and enzymes and hormones that are involved in producing ketones, using ketones, regulating all kinds of things that contribute to what your ketone level might be at any point in time. And the key word here is context. Everything is context, whether it's blood glucose or ketones or insulin or any of that stuff. And because so few people really have an appreciation for the, the biochemistry, the biochemical complexity of the human body, you'll test, you'll prick your finger or you'll pee on a piece chip or something. You'll see a number or you'll see a color and you'll be upset or you'll be worried. You'll be surprised and you'll think you're doing something wrong. Oh, why is it so low? Why isn't it darker? Whatever the case is, you're going to have just a false conclusion. You're, you're going to come to some conclusion that may not be warranted by the number or the color that you're seeing. So I really, discourage testing generally, but there are reasons to test. And, and real quick, I guess I'll just say, and, and you've heard me say this before in past videos, the only times that I really recommend testing is if somebody's doing keto and they think they're doing it right and they're not getting the result they want because maybe they're not in ketosis, maybe they're not, or maybe they are at a very low level and maybe whatever thing they're trying to accomplish would be get better if the level was higher. And that's kind of a whole other video that I could do. Not everyone needs high ketones. We're going to talk about that too. But the point is, if you're on a ketogenic diet and you're not getting your intended result, then the first thing to, to verify is that you're actually in ketosis. So then of course you do want to test. Um, and okay. So beyond that, let's see what else I want to say. Okay. It's not a contest. You don't win any prizes for having the highest ketones. So, you know, it's, it's not a competition. You don't have to post your meter on, you know, on Instagram or on Twitter or Reddit or whatever. No one cares. No one cares what your ketone level is. Okay. It's not, you're not proving anything to anyone. You're not one upping anyone. You're not better than someone else. Cause your ketone level is higher. Um, second thing I want to say is that 
higher key, and I think I, I think I kind of just hinted at this, higher ketones don't mean that the diet is working better for you or that you're going to get the result you want more quickly or better, you know? You, many conditions get better without high ketones. You can be at a very, very low level and still do wonderfully. And so, you know, talking about fat loss specifically, because I know that is the goal for so many of you, having higher ketones does not cause you to lose weight faster or to lose more weight. And I, there's a whole chapter on that in the Stall Slayer, stallslayer.com. So um, if you want to know more about that, you can read that. But it's, you know, I've, I've mentioned many times that I've had very, very dark urine ketones when I kind of overdose on the mayonnaise. If you think I'm losing body fat, eating hundreds, if not thousands of extra calories every day from pure fat, think again. So higher ketones don't necessarily mean you're going to get better results or get them faster. Now, there might be some circumstances where it is true that you do need a higher ketone level, but that that's an individual thing. And it's most things that people use this way of eating for fat loss, PCOS, type two diabetes, um, type one diabetes, especially, we've got to be very careful when we talk about ketones with them, you know, migraines, all different kinds of things. Most of these things don't require high ketones. What they really require is lower insulin and lower blood glucose as well. But the lower blood glucose and lower insulin tend to go hand in hand, right? Okay. So that's, that's point two, higher ketones don't mean that you're doing better on the diet or that it's going to work faster for you. The other point, um, again, to, to stay with fat loss for a minute, I, and I know not all of you are doing keto for fat loss, but many of you are. If you guys know the keto gains group, ketogains.com, they get dynamite results. If you happen to be in their Facebook group, you've seen the before and after pictures. It's stunning the kind of results they get. And one of the leaders of that group, Tyler Cartwright, who is not only a colleague, but a dear personal friend of mine, Tyler has lost, if I remember right, 250 pounds, possibly more. He's lost more than I've ever even weighed. You know, he's literally half the man he used to be. And he doesn't test ketones often, but he says throughout the whole weight loss process, he never saw his ketones above, and I want to say 0.5, maybe something not that high. You know, he, he could see that he was in ketosis, but it was never that high. And guess what? He lost 250 pounds. Whatever that is in kilos for you people outside the U.S., you'll just have to do the math. Um, so that's, you, you do not require high ketones to lose body fat. Now, another point, and yes, this, I feel like this is very important introductory info. I said this was going to be a long video. Some people's bodies just generate ketones more readily than others. They don't have to go to the same extremes as some other people do. Some people won't see a, a high ketone level unless they fast for many days, or they could take a lot of MCT oil or coconut oil, but in their regular sort of ketogenic diet, in, including exercise, including good sleep, for whatever reason, they just don't have high ketones. They feel great, they look great, they're getting all the results they want, but their ketones just are not that high. And, um, you know, for other people, it's the opposite. Other people, my video's blurry, sorry. Hello, video on blur. Why? Camera, hello. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Huh. So some people do generate ketones really easily. Some people, like I've said this before numerous times, some people can have a surprising amount of carbohydrate in their diet and still be in ketosis. You know, some of us require 20 or 30 total grams or fewer, like an Atkins induction or a Dr. Westman page for very, very strict carbohydrate control. Some people can have 50, 60, 80 grams of carbs a day and still be in ketosis. So it just, it's a very individual thing. Some people lose weight faster than others. Some people are taller or shorter. Some people have blonde hair. Some people have blue eyes. Some people's bodies just make ketones more readily than others. So just like with anything, you can't compare yourself to anyone else. Why is that person's ketone higher? Why is that? They're just different. You're not you're not less than, you're not a less worthy person because your ketones are lower. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I wanna say. Okay, 
Now, let's, another really important point to make is why, why are we so interested in high ketones? Because let's think about blood sugar, right? Blood glucose. If I ever say blood sugar or blood glucose, you know, they're the same thing, just a different word to say it. We generally don't like to have high blood glucose because it's indicative that the cells are not taking up and using the glucose. It's just pooling in the bloodstream so the level is rising, right? So how come we're chasing high ketones? Is it, is it not the same that if your ketones are building up and accumulating in the blood, it's because your cells aren't taking them up and using them or aren't taking them up and using them as quickly as they're being produced. If there's more ketones being produced and entering your bloodstream and they're, they're doing that more rapidly than your cells are taking them up and using them, then the, then the level's gonna rise. Why do we think that's a good thing when the same process with blood sugar we think is bad? Now, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it is bad. I'm not saying high ketones are bad. I'm just saying that why, why should a ketone level be five, six, seven on a, on a just regular day when you're not fasting and you're not doing anything extreme? You know, why should it be that high? Why aren't your cells taking it up in a timely manner? So it's, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just simply raising the question. Why do we think it's so important to have high ketones when the high, now, now I know that the high blood sugar is damaging and the high ketones really aren't when under a certain threshold, of course, but it's just, it's just food for thought, right? That to, to me anyway, a high and I'll, next, my next point is what's high, what's low. A high ketone level means that you're they're just being produced more quickly than your cells are taking them up. So what is high and low? It depends on who you ask. Ask 10 keto people, doctors, nutritionists, experts, you'll get 10 different answers. You'll often hear that, that the range for what they call nutritional ketosis, as opposed to something like the ketosis of a prolonged fast or someone who's sick, it, it, who is ill, is in ketosis, or a type 1 diabetic ketoacidosis, a keto acidosis crisis situation. So when we're talking about safe, beneficial nutritional ketosis, you'll often hear that the range is 0.5 to 5.0 millimoles per liter. And so I'm, I'm talking about blood, of course. And that probably comes from the work of Stephen Finney and Jeff Volek. Their books, The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Living and Low-Carbohydrate Performance, I'll put links below, that's where they kind of give this range. That's probably what they've seen most often in the research. But I, I'm pretty sure that they themselves have kind of walked back on that a little because they're involved in the research that Verta Health is doing now. They're, they're a private company that's kind of trying to bring keto as a diabetes reversal tool to the masses. And in the studies they've done, they've published a bunch of papers by now, they've seen plenty of their study subjects lose weight and more importantly, massively improve or reverse type two diabetes, getting the blood sugar down, getting the insulin down, getting you know the blood pressure down, the triglycerides down, HDL up, all the good things happen when their ketones are not even at 0 0.5, maybe they're 0 0.1, 0 0.2, whatever it is, because you do not require high ketones to get these results. So when, you know, sometimes I have people write to me, you know, my ketone level is only 0 0.4, what am I doing wrong? And I'm like, uh, nothing, because 0 0.4 is a perfectly great ketone level. The ketone level, f fasting normal, like morning ketone level, of somebody not on a ketogenic diet, somebody just eating a normal standard Western type diet is like 0, 0.0. Sometimes, you know, some people will wake up in a mildly ketogenic state, especially if they had dinner like earlier the night before. And again, if they're relatively fit and their bodies are just doing what bodies do, you might wake up in a mild ketogenic state. I personally think a lot of people do. And I think morning breath, is probably ketone breath in at least some people. I mean, it, it probably also is just bad breath because you've had your mouth shut all night, whatever. But I think some of that might actually be keto breath. But even so, that morning ketone level for those people is usually like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something kind of low. So if you're at 0 0.2 normally, 
guess what? You're already twice as high as someone who's just not on a ketogenic diet and they're 0.1 in them. 0.2 might sound low to you, but isn't it double 0.1? And 1.0, some of you might not think that's high, it's 10 times high, right? It's a full order of magnitude higher than 0.1. And we could say the same, 0.3, 0.4. You're already triple or quadruple the ketone level of someone who's just eating a regular Western diet. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be discouraged if your ketone level was there. And the, you know, the thing to ask yourself is not why is my ketone level so high, so low, so hello, so low or so high. The thing to ask yourself is how am I doing? How am I feeling? If I want to lose weight, am I losing weight? If I want to clear up my skin, is my skin clearing up? If I want to have more energy, have I been having more energy? If my joints were hurting, do my joints hurt anymore? None of that has anything to do with your ketone level. So actually, how are you feeling? regardless of what your ketone level is. So going back to the whole, um, you know, the ketones, ketones are just kind of generating in the blood. Remember too, that your ketone level fluctuates a lot throughout the day. It's not a steady state. It's not like you check it first thing in the morning and it's 0.4 and it's going to be 0.4 all day long. It can change dramatically. It can be 0.1, that it can be 2.4 just depending on what you're doing. So if you're only testing once a day, you're really only getting what your ketone level happens to be at that one point in time. It's a snapshot at that one point in time. And it's the same thing with urine testing or breath testing. That's gonna change a lot throughout the day. So with the blood, I can't afford to test blood. So, I mean, more than I have a blood meter, I rarely use it because the test strips are so expensive. I do test urine. For most people, it is not true that the urine test strips stop working after you've been on keto for a while. Mine still work just fine. There do seem to be a couple of people here and there out there for whom the urine strips don't work anymore or maybe they don't correspond. Like if your blood level is showing something very high, like 4.0, your urine strip will maybe turn light pink when it should be very dark. I think that's rare. I think for most people, the urine strips do work. Anyway, my point is whatever method you're using to test, if you're only testing once a day, you're only seeing what your level is at that point in time. And it should be in flux. Your, your body is doing all kinds of different things throughout the day. And you know, if you know my friend Dave Feldman from cholesterolcode.com, he's constantly making the very valid point that when you take a sample from your blood or your urine, that's, or well, let, let's talk about blood really. It's what's in the bloodstream. You're measuring what is in your bloodstream. You're not measuring what your cells are using, right? And I talked about that. There's ketones in the blood versus your cells taking them up and actually metabolizing them, burning them for fuel. So you see your blood level, okay, whoop de doo You don't know how, how ketogenic are you in that you're using the ketones. So, you know, I'm just raising questions. I don't even have a lot of answers. Like what I should have said at the first minute of this video was there's a lot that is not known. A lot is unknown. What I'm sharing with you is my understanding of the sort of current state of the science. Okay. So going along with the ketones being generated versus ketones being used, you can absolutely be fat adapted and be running on fat without producing a high level of ketones. And I have a very long, very detailed blog post about this, this issue and, and measuring ketones and all this stuff we're going over today. I will put a link in the notes. Um, again, I'll repeat and then I'll explain. You can absolutely be a fat burner, be fat adapted, be running, fueling your metabolism on fat without generating a high level of, level of ketones. If you look at any biochemistry textbook where they talk about ketogenesis, the process of making ketones, they always say ketones are the byproduct of incomplete oxidation of fatty acids. It's almost always said in that exact word or some wording or some close variation of it. They're, they're the result of the incomplete oxidation of fatty acids. Okay, what does that mean in plain English? 
it means that when you're burning fat, if for if you look, I have a very cool diagram of this in that blog post. I do recommend you look at that post. You scroll way down, you'll see an image of like some cycles and it's, it's described, it, it illustrates what I'm describing to you now. The process by which fats are burned, okay, they're burning, they're in the cycle, there's different enzymes and hormones that are taking it from step to step to step, like here's fat, conversion step, conversion step, conversion step, conversion step, conversion step, energy, ATP energy. If, if the amounts of some of the enzymes involved in each of these conversion steps, if you don't have enough of them, then you can't fully convert that fat into energy. The cycle is, it's never stopped, but it's maybe held up. It's like a little roadblock in there and it's not, you know, cycling the way it's supposed to or as quickly. And yes, this is an oversimplification for any, you know, scientists out there who are watching. I'm explaining for lay people here. So when the cycle can't cycle as normal, some of these fats are shunted off elsewhere into making ketones. So instead of actually being fully burned, fully oxidized in that cycle, they're sent to make ketones. And then the ketones themselves can be burned for energy in the same cycle in a different cell. You know, most ketogenesis happens in the liver and then the liver sends the ketones out to fuel other, other tissues and organs and glands and blah, blah, blah. So if your body is fully oxidizing the fats, if you do have all the stuff you need at the right time to keep that cycle going, you know, full, full throttle or whatever, then you're going to completely burn the fats. There's not going to be any left over to shunt toward ketogenesis. And most likely there's going to be some. So this is when your ketone level is low, right? When you're at 0 0.1, 0 0.2 you know you're fat adapted you know you're running on fat because you're only eating 10 20 30 40 grams of carbs a day right you your basal metabolic rate is what probably at least a thousand calories your basal metabolic rate meaning when you're sitting on your butt on the couch doing nothing how how much energy does your body burn just to keep you alive you know varies widely from individuals but it's it's a significant amount of energy and if you're only eating, you know, 20 or 40 grams of carbohydrate, we're looking at what, 80 calories? You know, 80, 20, 20 grams of carbs, four, four calories a gram, you're looking at 80 calories a day. Even if you have 50 grams of carbs a day, that's only what? Why can't I do math? 200, math was never my strong suit, 200 grams of carbs, right? Four, four grams, so, or two, 200 calories. 200 calories out of a um, out of a total day's energy is nothing. So if you're eating a very low carbohydrate diet, you know your body has to be running on something. It's not running a whole lot on glucose anymore. It's not running a whole lot on carbohydrate because you're not giving it any carbohydrate. Now, yes, your body is making the glucose it needs. We, we all need a little bit of glucose, no matter how ketogenic you are, how fat adapted you are, your blood sugar is never gonna be zero. But you know that the amount of carbohydrate you're eating is nowhere near enough to power all your functions, let alone, if you're just going for a walk or you're just out doing your normal day, you're going up a flight of stairs, you're just walking around the office, you're just walking around your home, let alone if you're out for a run or you're weightlifting, something has to be providing all this fuel. You're only eating this much carbohydrate, so where's that fuel coming from? It's coming from fat, it has to be. And so you are running on fat even if you're not generating high ketones. Like I said, you might just, that cycle might just be running full speed and there's just not a whole lot being sent to make ketones. So don't despair. If you know that you're not eating a lot of carbs, guess what, congratulations, you're fat adapted. You might not be super duper high ketones, but you are fat adapted. Okay, so why, why would ketones be low? I think I've made all the points I wanted to make here. Now that I've kind of laid all that groundwork, why, why would your ketones be low sometimes? This is where a lot of the unknown stuff is. This is where a lot of the gray area is. So this is more speculation on my part than anything, but this is what I think, this is what I've heard from others that I respect. One of the things could be, like I just said, 
the ketones are not building up to a high level in your blood because your body's using them. If you are using something at the same rate they're being produced, then it's not gonna build up, right? Think about filling your, your kitchen sink. If your faucet is on, but the water is going down the drain just as quickly as the water is coming in from the spigot, then there's no what the water doesn't accumulate in the sink, right? It goes right down the drain. Kind of the same with ketones, maybe. If your cells are taking them up and using them at the same rate they're being sent into the bloodstream, then they're not going to accumulate in the bloodstream. So that's kind of a good thing. Instead of looking at a low ketone level as something bad or like, what am I doing wrong? You could say, great, I know that I'm barely eating any carbohydrates, so I must be running on fat. And if I'm, I'm either not producing ketones or if I am producing ketones, my body's using them really well. Great, great. Um, and if, let's see, it tends to be, it seems to be that people who are very athletic don't generate high ketones. And you would think that it would be the opposite. You would think that the people that are the most active and burning the most fat and who have such high metabolic rates would be producing the most ketones because they're just breaking down fat so much. But again, if their metabolic rate is so high, they might just be sucking up those ketones like a little sponge. Like their cells are just like, yes, ketones, gimme, 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 gimme. So, but again, speculation, we don't know. But but it's, I, I seem to, I, I feel like I see this more with athletes. And the keto gains group, I think they've found this too. They find a lot of people worried about their ketone level and it's, oh, why am I ketone so low? And they're like, they have the greatest phrase. They Their motto is chase results, not ketones. Because what if you're getting the results? What if you're losing weight? You feel great. You can lift more. Your, your, your brain fog is gone. Your skin you know is clear. Your, your menstrual cramps are gone. All this great stuff has happened. And who cares what your ketone level is? Pay attention to the results, not your ketones. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think why else they could be low. It could be that your diet isn't quite as ketogenic as you think it is. You know, it could be that maybe, maybe you're eating that 40 or 50 grams of carbs. So you are fat adapted. You are maybe even ketogenic, but it's, it's at the very low end. You could experiment for a couple days, go even lower, really, really pay attention to that total carbohydrate intake. Don't mess around with net carbs. Don't mess around with the sugar alcohols. Go very, very low carb and then, and higher fat. Yeah. Eating more fat in the context of being very, very low carb will raise your ketone level. And I know, like I gave my mayonnaise example before, you will have higher ketones if you eat more fat and you're very very low in total carbs. It doesn't mean you're going to get better results or lose weight faster or feel better. Okay. What else I was saying, why they could be low. Um, so <clears throat> why, why would they be high? You know, let's talk about that for a second because it's not like, I keep saying it's not a bad thing. If your ketone level is low or lowish, relatively speaking, but it's not a bad thing if they're high either. Like, like, don't be afraid if your level is four, five, six, when, you know, I've been saying your level is high because the ketones are building up in your bloodstream because your cells aren't using them. So now if, if you're one of those people, you might be afraid like, oh, is it too high? Like, like is, is something wrong with me that my body's not using them? No. Again, kind of speculation, but based on my understanding of how all this works in the body and especially in the brain, when you have been on a ketogenic diet for a while, your if I if I understand correctly, every single cell in your body that has mitochondria, and I'll talk about this in a second, every single cell in your body that has mitochondria can burn fats or ketones and, and glucose, but every every single cell in your entire body can burn glucose. The reason we need mitochondria to burn fats and ketones is because fats and ketones are burned in the mitochondria. So if you have a cell, there are a couple of types of cells in your body that actually don't have mitochondria that are dependent on glucose. 
So every other cell can use glucose or fats or ketones. There are certain cells that will use ketones more readily. I hate to say more easily or better. I don't think that's the right word. I, I don't know the right word to use, but we'll just say they prefer ketones over fats. And that word is also not accurate, but we, we have to find some way to explain this, right? And it appears to be that when you're kind of new to a ketogenic diet, your muscle cells, which, are, which is a huge part of your body, every, your quadriceps, your calves, your biceps, your triceps, your, your gastrocnemius, I don't even know how to, the deltoids, I don't even know how to say half of these muscles, like I don't know how to pronounce them correctly, but all of these muscles in your body are, you know, your, your muscles will readily take up ketones and use them. As you are on a ketogenic diet for a longer period of time, the muscles will kind of transition to using fat. They can still use ketones and probably still do, but they will use fat a lot more and spare the ketones for the brain because the brain is the tissue that appears to use ketones more readily or again, prefer it prefers ketones over fats, let's say. People, people will often say that the brain does not run on fat. That's not exactly true. Fatty acids can and do cross the blood brain barrier. Um, fatty acids can be broken down by certain brain cells and they generate ketones. I'm, I'm actually not even going to talk about it too much because that's going to go down a whole other rabbit hole that we don't want to go down. Well, not right now. Anyway, the point is the brain can take up and use fats, but it really prefers again, loaded problematic word. It prefers ketones. So if the brain uses ketones better than fats, but the muscles can run on fats really, really well, then at the beginning, before you're really adapted and adjusted to this radical dietary change you've had, the muscles are going to use whatever they can get. They'll use fats, they'll use ketones, they'll still use glucose. Over time, as your body has really adjusted, your body's like, oh, okay, this, this is what we're doing now. I guess, I guess we're not having a lot of carbohydrate. Our glucose is going to be lower a lot of the time. I guess, I guess we're just going to use fats. We can use fats really well. Mr. or Mrs. Brain up there uses ketones better. Why don't we take up all the fat and, and give the ketones to the brain? So if your ketone level is higher, it could be that it's because some of your cells are purposely not taking it up because they're letting something else take it up that uses them better. And my personal question, my sort of thinking out loud is still, well, if they're accumulating in the blood, then my brain isn't taking them up and using them at that same rate. But I don't know if that's good, bad, or means nothing. We there, again, there's so much we don't know about this, but um, I think that's probably one of the main reasons why your ketone level would be higher. And again, it's not good or bad. It just is what it is. And this is, this is why I'm so adamant about people not measuring unless you're going to appreciate the context. Who am I? What is my body doing at this moment in time? What do I typically eat? Am I fasted? Did I work out? How long have I been on a ketogenic diet? You know, um, did I drink last night? If you drink alcohol, copious amounts of alcohol, especially the next morning, guess what? Your ketones will be higher. And I might know, cause I might've tested this a few times. Um, <laughs> so uh, I know I'm not recommending that you do that little experiment. I'm just saying, don't again, like the, like the guys at keto gains say, don't chase, don't chase ketones, chase results. And it's, I don't have a problem with you measuring. If you want to test, test, but don't get upset. Don't get upset when you see something you don't like. Think about why it is what it is. Or maybe again, test five hours later, test 10 hours later and see if the result you get is any different. Let me make sure that I covered it all. Yeah. You know, I, I notice, and I think I've said this a couple of times in previous videos for my mood, I physically, I usually feel pretty good, but my mood 
tends to be a lot better when I am more ketogenic, you know, when my ketones are a little bit higher. And so it's, I, I'm not saying that there is never a reason to try to be more deeply ketogenic. And I, I did mention earlier, there are, there, there are some medical conditions, I think, that probably do respond to a higher ketone level. But many conditions don't require that. You know, all you need to do is bring down the blood sugar and insulin. So, you know, you, you could be your own experiment. Get, get higher ketones for a while, see how you feel, see if it makes you feel any better, any different, see if it gets you better results. If it doesn't, then you really don't need to worry about it. And I think that, you know, here's, here's the thing too. I did, I did that video a few, a while back on Dr. Atkins and the Atkins diet. I will link to it below. Dr. Atkins was practicing for a long time, even before he wrote his book, right? His, his first book was 1972. He updated it in the 1990s, which is the book that got me started in, in the low carb world. And he was having success with patients for years and years before he even wrote the book, right? He wouldn't have even written the first book if he couldn't say, I see this all the time in my patients, every day at my clinic, I see X, Y, Z. So long before any of this measuring technology even existed, people got great results. They could lose weight, they could reverse their diabetes, they could bring their blood pressure down, they could get rid of joint pain, they could get rid of fatigue. You know, and, and like I've, I've mentioned before, that guy, William, William Banting, yeah, William Banting from the, um, the 1800s, Banting's Letter on Corpulence, that was like the first low carb guide, you know, little guide out there, 1800s, you couldn't measure urine ketones then, you couldn't measure blood or breath ketones and people still lost weight. So I just, just trust the process, trust the process, try not to obsess over the numbers, but this was a great question because it's it is an important topic i know i know a lot of you probably see a number on your meter and you're you're upset you start banging your head against the wall what am i doing wrong what what do i need to change maybe absolutely nothing maybe you're doing just great if you're not doing great whatever your ketone level is low high in between i do consultations there'll be a link below you can book a consultation with me we can see what the issue is and maybe get this diet working better for you. I think that's it for now. Hopefully at 37 minutes, hopefully I didn't forget anything to say. No, just check out, check out that blog post. I'm going to link to it is very long, but I think it's going to explain a lot to you. It's going to put your mind at ease. If you're one of these people that, that worries why your ketone level is so low. And again, really do scroll down in that post and look at that image of the cycle that I was talking about, where you could be burning fat without generating high ketones. That is it. Stallslayer.com for my ebook. And I will see you on the flip side. Take care.